Midwestern accent is, and I always just say, just just say anything you want with less confidence. <laughs> That's it. Like, sure, 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 sure. So I've lived, in, <laughs> I've lived in New York for about four years now, and so I have like competing voices in my head when I'm trying to make decisions. Like, should I do the Midwestern thing or should I do the New York thing? And my Midwestern voice is the voice that you make when you're trying to tell your barber that you do like the haircut, <laughs> when you really, really don't like the haircut, you know? Um, and my New York voice is Dolly Parton for some reason. <laughs> and look, I know Dolly Parton's not from New York, but she exudes the confidence of a New Yorker, okay? So I'm on a, a there's a crowded subway and I'm deciding whether to get on or not. And I just hear Dolly Parton in my head and she says, well, a peacock who hides its feathers is just another turkey. Get on the subway, dollface. Get on that subway. <laughs> Dolly Parton fans over here. Uh, good to know. I, um, I, uh, I look like I like to cry. I know that. I know that about. Any, any strong men here like to cry? Anyone? Any weak, vulnerable men here like to cry? Okay. Does, it, does anybody like to cry? There we go. There we go. There we go. That's the spirit. Um, I do. I, I like crying. I wish I cried. I wish I cried more often than I do. I only cry in very specific moments. I only cry in moments of inclusion and diversity in sports films. <laughs> Clap if you guys have seen Cool Runnings. You guys seen that? One? Fucking amazing film. I cry every single time at the end. It's the most inspiring film of my childhood. Uh, I recently rewatched it and I noticed some shit about that film. Uh, they never mentioned race once. They always use these weird euphemisms to describe race. Uh, for example, uh, to describe black people, they would call them all new to bobsledding. <laughs> So, for example, um, the Swiss will never accept us because we're new to bobsledding. <laughs> so I've used it, started using it in my everyday life. You know, my my sister's got a new boyfriend and he's new to bobsledding. <laughs> you know, new to bobsledding, which explains, you know, he doesn't fit on on ski trips. You know, he doesn't fit in, but uh, he'll get there. He's athletic. <laughs> Yeah. Movies are weird when you rewatch them as an adult, man. You learn some shit about yourself. <laughs> um, at, I think that uh, I think that Home Alone was just a prequel to the movie Saw. <laughs> Anybody else notice that Macaulay Culkin could have called the cops 20 minutes into it, <laughs> but he just didn't. He lured these vagrants into his home <laughs> with his trinkets and Christmas presents. These poor men were starving and dying in the Chicago winter. He sets them on fire, puts poisonous spiders on their face. Something with the Achilles tendon. I don't know what torture happened in Saw and what happened in Home Alone. That's how fucked up those movies are for me. Can you blame the guys for trying to get in? They're just trying to survive Reaganomics, you know? George H.W. Bush, man. I mean, I didn't have a job back then, you know? I mean, I was four, but I didn't have a job. It was, it was economy. Uh, no, I do love movies. I recently watched The Matrix. Clap for The Matrix. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend had never seen The Matrix before, and she was amazed to watch it. You know, I mean, she was just blown away by all the iconic scenes. You know, the, the kid bends the spoon. You know, the guy dodges the bullets. And uh, then at the very end, when Neo's flying away and the Rage Against the Machine song comes on, she turns to me and she's like, Oh, The Matrix! I've seen this one before! <laughs> My bad. I was thinking of the one, what's the one, what's the one where Steve Carell's the agent? What's that one where Steve Carell's the agent? What's the 
where Steve Carell's the boss? I've never seen The Office. I'm sorry, I've never seen The Office. <laughs> Can we watch The Office? <laughs> and so we did. We watched the entire office. Um, now my girlfriend's great. She's very book smart. She's uh, not very street smart, though. Um, like, for example, she doesn't even know that I have a son in Ohio. You know? Like, get out of the books! <laughs> Can't learn that from a class, you know? <laughs> she doesn't even know my wife's name. <laughs> it's crazy, you know? Like, some things can't be taught in class. <laughs> Gotta just understand that. I, uh, I used to work for a non-for-profit organization. Uh, my friend used to work for a non-for-profit organization. Uh, but he made more money at his non-profit than me. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that makes me more successful in our industry. As a matter of fact, that's how that works. That is, it's precisely how that works. It was a very nice job. I used to work with kids in this fifth grade classroom. This one fifth grader, his name was Christian. Christian had to take this math equation and turn it into a word problem. Christian came up with this all on his own. 18 kids walk into the woods. Five go missing, and then three go missing. How many are still alive? And it was inspiring for me, you know? Like, I got to see a psychopath develop right underneath my eyes. They grow up so fast. Okay, thank you very much!